Behind me is the parliament of my home country of Sweden. Democracy is an old idea. Almost 2,500 years ago, every free adult male in Athens, Greece, was part of the legislative body, the Assembly, which controlled both the administration and the judiciary. But Athens wasn't just the birthplace of democracy. It was also the birthplace of populism and demagoguery. When the people governed, their governance could be flawed. They decided to condemn Socrates to death for corrupting the youth of Athens with his ideas of critical thinking. And there were other instances of horrible repression. Then, sometimes, the assembly regretted their decision and turned on the speakers who had talked them into it and chased them out of the city. Athenian democracy might have been an improvement overruled by kings, but clearly there was more work to be done. The word democracy means the common man rules. And in Athens, it literally meant the majority ruled absolutely. The majority could do anything to the minority, or what today we would call an illiberal democracy. As philosopher Karl Popper pointed out, the Enlightenment idea of liberal democracy is not that the majority is always right. Instead, a liberal democracy is based on the idea that people are free to lead their own lives, and democracy is installed as a reasonably effective institutional safeguard against tyranny. And this includes tyranny of the majority. This idea of democracy grew out of a thousand-year struggle to gnaw away at the power of Europe's absolute kings. Charters like England's Magna Carta in 1215 limited the arbitrary power of kings. In colonial America, where kings and aristocracy were an ocean away, such ideas could be tested from scratch. Many towns in New England still hold town meetings to determine local issues using direct democracy. The American states established a system of voting, but with few exceptions, only free men who owned property were initially allowed to vote. Even in a country built on the idea of liberty, it took time for the promise to be fulfilled. But the example inspired the world and the great democratic transformations. All government action is based on force. If you don't follow the rules in the end, we call the police. But even when a majority of people consider force necessary, it can be abused. So government is a bit like toxic materials, such as mercury. Both are useful to mankind in limited amounts and in very specific circumstances. Liberal democracy, with a division of powers and constitutional protections for individual rights against the majority, is one way of making sure of that. Democratic elections are needed, not as a way to sanctify decisions, but as one of many ways in which to control the rulers. The beauty of the democratic ideal remains the great fact that we, the people, are able to throw the bumps out. Hey, check out these other great videos from Free to Choose Network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get updated on episodes of New and Improved with me, Johan Norberg.